returns. number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you another modern story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, in several of my recent stories, I have hinted of the activities of spies today. As all who read know, this activity is very real, and often more menacing to peace than the plots of the international crooks. No government is free from their threat. Today, I bring you a story of a woman spy who worked alone, a modern Matahara. My old friend, John Holbrook, will take up the story at this point. Thank you, K-7. Recently, K-7 told a story of propaganda, a story in which Rita Drake, daughter of a special agent, called on B-9 to rescue her father. Following that adventure, B-9 remained with the Drakes for several days. He was expecting a cablegram. Our story now opens as the message arrives. B-9. Yes, Rita. I'm over here reading. B-9, the cable you've been expecting has just arrived. I signed for it. Oh, thank you. Uh, let me have it, please. Does it mean that you're going to leave us? Yes, Rita. I'm afraid it does. This is extremely important. One of the continent's most dangerous spies is at work. Are you going after him? Yes, but it's not a man, Rita. This spy is a woman. And... What's the matter? I was just thinking. Let me read you this cablegram. Sample of poison gas tested. Found to be exceptionally deadly. Zora Laval also after it. It's signed K-7. K-7? Is he working on the case too? No, but I sent the gas to him to be tested. This is his report. Rita, would you like to work on this case with me? Would I? Oh, of course I would, B-9. But do you think Father let me? Yes, I'm sure he would. I'm going to have to deal with a woman, and I think you can be useful. Tell me what I'd have to do. Where is this woman's spy? I think I know where to find her, but let me outline the whole case. An old chemist, Dr. Delamain, has discovered a particularly deadly gas. The information peddlers are after the formula. If they should get it, well, I don't like to think what might happen. That gas would kill millions if there were a war. I can't believe that a woman... Oh, she couldn't sell a gas like that. She could, and she would, Rita. You don't know Zora Laval. She's beautiful and heartless. I've got to get to Dr. Delamere before she does, and you're going with me. B-9 and Rita took off by plane within an hour. They had a continent to cross, but they were too late, for even while they were in the air, the crafty Zora Laval talked with the old chemist, Dr. de Lamant. She used woman's most powerful weapons, beauty and charm. But don't you see, Doctor, this gas you have discovered could be dropped from airplanes on cities. It would kill thousands of defenseless women and children. Oh, my gosh, will never be so. I have said that I will destroy the formula. It must be destroyed, Doctor, but you must let me do it. I have come to you representing the women of the world. It is women who must destroy such deadly weapons of war. I see no reason why I should give it to you. You must, Doctor. If you should destroy your formula yourself, no one would be sure it was gone. Spies would believe you still possessed it. Your life would be in constant danger. But if it were known that the gas and formula had been given to me... Uh, they would stop pestering me, perhaps, eh? That is it, Doctor. One spy has already called on you. Eh? How do you know that? 
I have heard that he was here in the city. He calls himself B-9. The special agent? He has been here, hasn't he? Yes, yes, last week. But he is a special agent. No, doctor, he is a spy. His credentials are false. It is men like him who would not believe that your formula was gone. He might even kill you, it doctor. It is enough. I even gave him a sample of my gas. You gave B-9 a sample? Tell me, doctor, can the gas be analyzed? No, no, it is impossible. The formula is needed. Then give me a cylinder of gas and your formula. Doctor, give it to me before it is too late. Yes, yes, you shall have it. Wait, the cylinder is small. It is here on my bench. Yeah, take it. But remember, there is enough gas in this little cylinder to kill a hundred people. The valve on top must never be turned. Thank you, Doctor. Next week, there will be a mass meeting of the women who love peace. This cylinder will be destroyed before their eyes. Then your formula will also be burned. He will give me that, too. Yes, yes, take it, take it. Let the world know that Dr. Delamont has destroyed his poison gas. Here, here is the formula. Thank you, Doctor. There is no other copy? Well, that is the only one. Then I will leave you. And if B-9 returns, tell him that you have given your gas and formula to Zora Laval. <laughs> A few hours later, B-9 arrived in the small city and immediately called on the old chemist. Oh, good afternoon, Doctor. So, it is you. Go away. I do not want to talk to you. Doctor. You are a spy. I have found out about you. But you are too late. My poison gas and formula have been given to Zora Laval. You and the other spies have lost. Now go before I call the police. The old man refused to say more. Zora Laval had tricked him and possessed both the poison gas and the formula. B-9 worked fast. First, he traced the spy. A hotel clerk gave him his first clue. I made reservations for her, monsieur. She took the late afternoon Continental Express. Next, B-9 wireless K-7 and asked that certain arrangements be made to board the train. The message came back by radio. Official orders have been given the train crew. If you fly by plane, you can catch the train and flag it. Once aboard, you will be in complete command. This is K-7 speaking. That night, Rita and B-9 were landed near a small railroad station many miles from the old chemist's laboratory. Together, they waited on the station platform. Rita, I am leaving a lot in your hands. You know what to do. Yes, B-9. As soon as we board the train, you will be put in the same compartment with Zora Laval. Keep this small container always at your side, and remember, do nothing without using what it contains. I remember. Look, the train, I can see the light. We'll be aboard in a minute. It's going to stop for us. You're on your own now, Rita. I don't want you to be seen with me once we're aboard. Keep your head. I'll be near you. There's the conductor. Monsieur, you Yes, are... sir, we are the passengers for whom you stop, conductor. This young lady is to be put in the compartment with Zola Laval. I understand, monsieur. We have received orders. Monsieur, may I help you? We must start. Thank you. I'll be somewhere outside your compartment door. Don't worry, B-9. I know what to do. This way, ma'am. The train roared through the night, and one by one the slits of light under compartment doors blinked out as travelers went to their berths. The light in compartment 17 burned until nearly midnight. Then it, too, was blotted out. Outside the compartment door, B-9 kept vigil. Monsieur, you are still be up. Be quiet, you will be heard. But, monsieur, it is late after midnight. The train is in dark. So much the better. Don't worry about me. But, monsieur, if there is anything I can There's do... There's nothing, nothing anyone can do. Monsieur, you are worried. If you knew what was going on behind that compartment door, you would be worried, too. Now, leave me alone. I'll call you if there's anything I want. Yes, monsieur. Good night. Their 
Behind the door of compartment 17, two women slept, or appeared to sleep. Then one slowly rose from her berth. She adjusted something in the darkness, then cautiously crept toward a corner in which two traveling bags rested. Silently, she tried first one key and then another. Then, a lock snapped open. Stand where you are. If you attempt to move, I will shoot you. Oh. You are a thief. What are you doing with my bags? Don't move toward the light switch. You tell me what I must do? I ought to kill you. Remain where you are, Zora Lavelle. I have your formula. You will never leave this plane with it. And I also have your container of poison gas. If you attempt to put on the lights, I'll turn the valve and release the gas. You wouldn't dare do that. This compartment will become a death trap. I'll turn the valve if you move. You are bluffing. I'm coming after you. I've warned you. Listen. You fool! Let me out! Don't try to get away, Miss Lavelle. Close the door, the gas! You're under arrest. I had to make certain you had the gas and formula with please, you. Please, please let me go. I don't want to die like her. If that gas should come out under that door... It won't. You don't understand. One breath of that gas would be so dead. I know that as well as you do. The door is opening. Laura's fainted, B-9. You opened the windows, Rita? Yes, as soon as she ran out of the compartment. The speed of the train has cleared the room. I let the gas that remained in the cylinder escape into the wind. Good. Then it's been dissipated into the wind. It will harm no one. You have the formula? Yes, it's here. Good, Rita. Our work is done. You can remove your gas mask. It's coming. Oh, it seems good to get it off. That gas mask saved your life, Rita. Now we've got one more job. Perhaps we should wait until Zora Laval comes out of her faint. I'd like to have her watch us. What are you going to do? Take this match and strike it, Rita. All right. Now, burn this poison gas formula in the name of world peace. Once again, a special agent served the cause of peace. Zora Lavelle was imprisoned. She no longer menaces the nations of the world. And may I repeat here, spies are active in every country today. To know of their activities is to be warned against them. Listen for my next story. This is K-7 speaking.